Okay, so a couple of years ago, we were able to find that the activity of a grid cell module lives on this toroidal manifold, as we can see here. Well, today, we're trying to understand how and when this representation is formed during the course of development. And so I'm Eric, I'm a postdoc at the Benjamin Dunn's lab, or group, and this is joint work with Matteo Guardamagna at the Moser lab. And so a grid cell module is usually defined as a group of these grid cells which share a hexagonal grid-like pattern. So what we can see is that these grid cells are spa share like an orientation and a spacing, but that the, they are spatially offset from one another. And if we look at kind of this uh, repetitive uh, fundamental tile, which is the rhombus, we can see that each cell encodes a distinct uh, location, <laughs> thanks, uh, a distinct location within this rhombus. And so a grid cell module would then cover the whole rhombus. And furthermore, if we can glue the, uh, the style according to the periodicities of this uh, pattern, we see that we get a toroidal surface and would thus expect that the activity lives on this torus. However, if we try to visualize the shape uh, of this data through dimensionality reduction, we can easily struggle. First of all, neural recordings are usually noisy and we have a lot of different kinds of cells in our data. But even if we find the right cells and the relevant time points, it is still hard to really say uh, what the shape is. But that's where topological data analysis comes in which tries to extract the relevant topological features of our data, and in particular, persistent homology gives these barcodes which count and measure kind of the number of n-dimensional holes in our data. And then we can compare that with known topological spaces. So this allowed us to kind of reveal the um, toroidal grid cell state space in adult rats for several different modules and across both open field foraging and during sleep. And furthermore, we could get a toroidal parametrization and compare that with the spatial uh, movement of the animal. We can, I don't know if this video works, apparently not, but uh, we could then compare the kind of, yeah, yeah. Okay, either way. You can uh, imagine at least that uh, <laughs> the internal representation on the right moves kind of in alignment with the spatial trajectory which is recorded on the left. And so what we're now trying to understand is how is this representation formed? Is it through learning the, ex learning the environment and through active exploration? Or do we have like an innate uh, representation of space? which is performed through evolution. And so Matteo has made uh, chronic recordings in uh, these uh, rat pups, even before their eyes and ear canals open so that they can't really see or hear. Furthermore, they can't really move around so we don't have an external covariate with which we can classify which are the grid cells. However, in more recent work, we looked at the head-fixed mice running on this uh, tread or, yeah, treadmill, and we're able to find clusters with this toroidal shape. Thus, we can cluster our data and look at the internal representation and discern the topology of different clusters. And indeed, already at postnatal day 10, again before their eyes and ears open, we can detect clusters with clear topological signature and single cell responses to the decoded torus that has like adult-like responses. We also see clear ring topology in some ensembles, indicating that also the head direction cell network uh, is formed before active exploration. And we can later, already at day 11, see that there forms multiple modules, which seems to split from a collective uh, grid cell population, and which then aligns with neurons with the spatial tuning at later days. 
So a couple more slides, or one more slide. So we're trying to then understand how this is formed, and it seems like there's an increase in inhibitory connections, and as well as a desynchronization of the activity across these days. And so by that, I just want to thank all my collaborators and you guys for listening. <laughs>